It's Vancouver's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Today, we are with Jen Ray, director and owner of Dance Cinema. Dance Cinema is a Canadian and American-based company founded in Vancouver that fuses the arts and industries of dance and film through productions, education, and events. Next up is the third annual Cascadia Dance and Cinema Festival happening June 2nd and 3rd in Vancouver. Well, Jen, thanks for coming on the show today and taking the time to talk to all our listeners today. Thanks for having me, Robert. Great. Okay, I want you to tell us a little bit more about Dance Cinema and the up-and-coming Cascadia Dance and Cinema Festival. Okay, well, Dance Cinema, the abridged version is, it's a company I started when I was a film student at UBC. Um, I was also teaching dance, and I just saw that there was this overlap in interest and in need with the two, um, the two arts, and, and there was room to really occupy that middle space, particularly in a place like Vancouver. So, you know, I just, it started as me making my first film as an experiment and it grew into, you know, something much bigger than that quite quickly. So, I mean, I launched it at the end of 2013 and, uh, Cascadia is now in its third year. We started that in 2015. And my goal with Cascadia was, you know, not to, uh, was not to create an opportunity to showcase my own films because I was already doing that at other festivals. It was really to, um, you know, to, to have my, my take at curating, um, because, you know, everyone has different tastes, everyone has different things that they, they value in films and different kind of, um, you know, projects that they want to highlight. And I, I had a very clear vision on the kinds of projects I wanted to highlight um, and, and a reason why I thought Vancouver would be a good home for it being like both a dance city, but really, um, a strong film city. I felt like it, it, it was a place that made sense to do that. Yeah. Especially with all the filming going on here, it's just uh, a, really a Mecca for, um, a lot of the production that goes on. Okay. How is Cascadia connecting the dance and film industries? What does that look like? Well, I would say it's, you know, we've had we're in year three now. So every year we've kind of tried some, there've been some events that are consistent, like the short film screenings. We've had those every year. Um, and each year has been a, a little different. You know, in our first year we screened nine feature films. Um, we also had the meeting of machines performances. So the idea was, you know, uh, dance cinema isn't, isn't just video format. It's also like, how do you mix, these things in a performance aspect, how do you explore them from a discussion standpoint, um, beyond doing a Q and a post screening. And, you know, that event was really my favorite, um, because dance film is, is not new, but it's something that, you know, even amongst people that agree that they're passionate about dance film, they don't even all call it the same thing. They call it screen dance. They call it dance on camera, dance on, you know, dance on screen. Like there's so many different terms for it. So really the idea was, is to explore, um, you know, what, what dance is doing right now, what film is doing right now, how people are combining them differently and, and do that by, you know, showcasing the short films, discussing, you know, industry topics or, you know, how different people are approaching their work and really like connecting people. Um, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for people to sum it because so often like we're getting all this information and we're watching all this content, but we don't always have time to like stop and process it, particularly when, you know, there things go viral or, I mean, you even think of the, um, you know, the childish Gambino video, um, you know, this May, 2018, like that, that incorporated dance, that was a screen dance or a dance film in some capacity. And, you know, it, it it's, when these things are a moment in time and of uh, cultural significance, um, I think it's really important that we, we actually take some time to commemorate them in some way. Okay. What is the vision for Cascadia and why has dance cinema decided to offer this here in Vancouver? Well, for those that don't know me, I, so <laughs> when I screened my, my first film, uh, at a festival, I actually met my husband in the States. Um, and so now I live in the States and I decided to still do Cascadia in Vancouver because I thought that 
I just saw like a, a need for it at the time. Um, I mean, when I, a festival is a, a, a long-term project. So, you know, between starting Cascadia and the first manifestation, I emigrated, um, you know, but I still think that Vancouver is a place that makes sense for it because as you said, we are a film city. Um, we're also a dance city, but I don't think that we're a city that necessarily, um, you know, in some ways people, uh, can sometimes stay in their, in their own clusters. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, people have really strong loyalties or they have their community and, you know, the dance community is very vibrant, but I just, you know, as kind of a, you know, a third party, I came in and was like, why don't these two groups meet? Or why don't we try and create this third group? I actually call, um, you know, a cinephile is someone that loves film. Well, I say dance cinephile, um, you know, people that love dance films. So I was like, what if we cultivate this third group here? Because I think it makes sense with Vancouver being a tech city, Vancouver being a film city, Vancouver being a dance city, but also like a big attraction. Um, we've consistently, we've attracted people from elsewhere in Canada and, and from the States quite a bit because they're, they're so, they're like, Oh my gosh, Vancouver, I have to come to the festival. And it's like, okay. Like you really realize when you talk to people not from Vancouver who don't know about the, the daily rain, um, just how much of an attract, an attraction the city itself is. Right, exactly. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff going on, especially when uh, when summer comes up. Spring is just a lot of festivals, and people are really starting to the cultures and the arts is just a perfect time to do that. What is the balance between Vancouverites and others involved in Cascadia? Well, every year um, we don't necessarily do a separate screening um, for all locals, um, but we do screen local films every year. And um, that's something that is really important, um, I think, is because we are sending films abroad, but it's important to also, like, be able to show it locally and have, you know, people that you know and people that you could actually more realistically work with um, actually see your film in a, in a certain forum. You know, like, in a, we, we host our screenings at the Van City Theater, and, like, that screen is so gorgeous. It's a nice you know, um, internationally recognized facility. Like it's so much better than like, Oh, I'm going to put this on the projector in my living room and, and we'll appreciate it. Like that has its place. And it, I, you know, I love those kinds of screenings, but you know, there's, there's a level of um, respect that you show a work when you do show it in a more formal forum. We also have a lot of guests, um, particularly it seems to be consistently from LA, I think because, you know, being a West coast thing and also just the, the volume of films coming out of Los Angeles, there's a lot of high quality dance films coming out of there. Um, and consequently we, we select quite a few. Um, this year we have, um, we have about four filmmakers coming up from LA. We have, let me think, one, two, three, four, five. I think we have about five local filmmakers, which is really exciting. I think that's more than we've ever had. Um, and we also have uh, someone who's from New Zealand as well. So it, I'm really excited that it, it really will be like this, you know, Cascadia is a, a place of mind and it's like a, obviously the fictional, um, you know, the political movement for the Pacific Northwest to separate, but that's not why I named it Cascadia. I named, you know, I named it because we're located in Cascadia, but also because it's a, this idea of like a border, um, you know, nor, no U.S. Canadian border, and it really being a place of mind and a place of ideas, and so. Good, yeah, so, that's that's really interesting because yeah. I was just at the BC Tech uh, Conference Summit, and uh, they talked about the Cascadia connecting Seattle, and just like you said, the ideas and the technology, and even the universities and things. So, um, I think that uh, you nailed it as far as that. You know, it's it's now becoming one now with Amazon moving here, and you know Microsoft being here. Um, it's really uniting the two cities mainly, and the calling of the Cascadia. Now they got this rapid transit going on, so it's mm -hmm. really interesting. So, who will be involved? And attending this year well this year so I'm really excited we do have some partner organizations that will be attending um, in the past you know we've tried we've you know digitally or you know by way of mentioning or program ads or screening sides there's been a presence um, in the past in trying to 
you know, connect people that are there with other opportunities beyond our event. But I'm really excited this year we have, um, so one of our programmers, Hannah, she's one of the co-founders of Screen Dance Collective, which is a curated, um, you know, resource for high quality screen dance on Vimeo. And um, she'll be she'll be present. Um, I mean, she's been programming for both of our festivals for two years now, and she's fantastic. Um, she, I just love working with her. Um, and she she actually has a degree in dance film um, as well. So it's nice to have a mix of people with you know formal education and industry experience. And so she'll be presenting about Screen Dance Collective. We also have Autumn Miss Belk coming from uh, North Carolina. She's from Raleigh. Um, she's with film art dance or rather she founded it. And this is like a touring, um, she curates dance films and grades them for K to 12 curriculum so that they actually go into schools in the States. Um, they're not in Canadian schools right now, but basically it's an opportunity that our filmmakers can have. Um, and actually our filmmakers last year, um, Gemma Crow made her film Warehouse with Warehouse Dance Collective and their documentary has actually been part of the Film Art Dance Collective. So already these opportunities are kind of rolling. Um, unfortunately, we don't have anyone present from Standard Vision this year, but um, you know, this is an opportunity that I was connected with through Alexa Roman at Los Angeles Dance Film Festival. So I'm really excited. We also have an opportunity with Standard Vision. They're an L.A.-based company, and they have this giant LED screen um, outside the Courtyard Marriott on Olympic Boulevard. And some of our filmmakers will be able to have their films screened there, um, which is a really cool opportunity. I mean, I unfortunately don't have the measurements, but it's it's massive, and it's on the side of a building, like in downtown L.A. Like, that's so cool. I wish we had a big screen like that in Vancouver for us. But, I mean, L.A. will have to do for this year. <laughs> okay. What can attendees expect from the events at Vancouver International Film Center on Sunday, June 3rd? Well, something I really love about our events is it's not like our audience is really mixed. Um, as I said, it's dance people, it's film people, it's dance cinephiles. It's people that don't know what dance film is, but they, you know, met somebody and somebody recommended it. Um, you know, it's, and we're all ages too, which I really like, like I'm such an old soul. I've been an old person since I was a child and, you know, it's nice to have like, you know, a mix of ages you have from, you know, school age children to, you know, elderly, wise, awesome people. And including my grandma, who's not elderly at all. She's just fantastic, you know? Um, so it's really nice that when you come to a Cascadia event, you're not kind of like, if you're looking to be with like a hip crowd, it's probably, you know, there's some ki people in there, but it's really like a nice mix of there's families, there's people of all ages, people of all backgrounds. Um, we, we have our forum and our reception at the beginning of the day. Um, and that's included with your dance cinephile pass. And then for those that just have the tickets, you can come to the two screenings. We have an evening screening and a night screening. Um, with a break in between and during the break, we'll have um, a prize draw with uh, gifts from Kibu Market and um, Flyover Canada. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty, it's not like an all day event, um, but you know, it is back to back. I've, I've planned things to kind of breathe and, you know, I think screenings are about an hour each and they're just blocks of short films from all over the world, um, including some that are made right here in Vancouver. So should be good. I'm excited. Good. How is this different from a dance festival or different from a film festival and what will the events be like? Well, we're definitely, I mean, we don't have any performances this year, which makes it, I would say different than most dance festivals. Cause of course, most dance festivals are focused on, um, you know, whether it's, in a, in a proscenium stage, or if it's in like, you know, some site specific performances, um, you know, it's, I would say we, we probably feel more like a film festival than a dance festival, particularly with events like the forum, um, you know, and also being at Van City theater, which is like one of the film venues in Vancouver. Um, so I would say if you're familiar with both dance festivals and film festivals, it will feel more like a film festival, but all the, um, all the content and kind of the 
you know, we're going to have like the, the music and you're going to have like the personality of the dance people there. So it'll be a little different. Um, but I would say probably closer to a film festival, given the, the kinds of events we're offering this year. Okay. Who is Cascadia for? Is it designed for industry indus- insiders or the general audience? Um, we offer a variety of events so that hopefully we can serve different people. And even the same events, you know, we, though we want to have intelligent conversation, we want it to be accessible. You know, it's not, it's not, Oh, we're going to, you know, the 10 of us that know a lot about dance film, are going to huddle over here. It's like, we want to make it accessible. We want it to feel like you know, if you're if you're a dancer and you're saying, oh, like I'm shooting a, a concept video or I'm just doing my choreography, like we want, we don't want it to feel out of reach. Like though quality is really important, and though like, you know, self proclaimed we we show top quality dance films. Um, you know, we want to w- welcome, um, you know, really welcome newer filmmakers and people that are at different stages of their career, or, like looking to explore you know, different ways they want to combine dance and film. Um, you know, and that said, like the films are, there's a lot of really accessible films that you don't have to be a dancer or a filmmaker to appreciate. Um, you know, I've, I've found that over the past few years, like some people come in, they don't even know what dance film is and they leave and they're like, I'm a dance cinephile. And, or, you know, there's, we pick a variety, um, you know, there's different dance styles, they're from different countries, there's some documentaries. So like, there really is something for everybody. And, you know, I mean, you'll, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll be inspired. Like it's definitely designed that way so that you'll get a lot out of it. If you're, if you're looking to get a lot out of it and if you have some background with it, but if you don't, it's okay too. And I'm sure that you'll still probably be moved by by the films and and inspired by the filmmakers present and you don't necessarily need to be in the industry you can be just be someone who just loves film that is maybe a a, someone who enjoys that would just want to check it out and or they like dance so um, it's just something for everyone it totally and i mean the thing is we're really we really want to push uh you know it it's not like we're going to do a we're not going to make everybody meet each other and like walk around and police it. But like, we do really encourage that people do connect at the event because that's part of the point of going to an in-person event. And I mean, part of the partnerships have come out of this and you know, we've, I've seen people one year at Cascadia and then the next year they made a film together, which is really cool. So, I mean, it's also for people that, you know, maybe you're an animator or maybe, maybe you like are a colorist or maybe you do, you know, set design or costume or any sort of job associated with, with the films because dance and film require so many different jobs to make them. It's like, it's really an opportunity for people that do other jobs that are related to it. Even if you don't think, Oh, I'm, I'm not a choreographer or I'm not a filmmaker. So it's not for me. It's like, well, I mean, are you a graphic designer? Because we need a lot of those. Are you an editor? Cause we need a lot of those. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So what's next? What is dance cinema doing beyond this June events? Well, we, um, I do discover dance cinema workshops and those tour. Um, so I've got a couple dates, um, really excited to be in California this summer. So that'll be very fun. Um, and what discover dance cinema is we do like a dance class, but we also learn about dance film history. Sometimes we make a video, but not always. It, it kind of depends on the class. Um, So workshops, and we also have Capital Dance and Cinema Festival, which is a year younger than Cascadia, Um, and that's the event I do in the D.C. area. Um, And, you know, not all the films are the same because the audiences are different, Um, but they're, and and also the timing, you know, in, in six months, you can you can get a, a lot new of new projects coming in or some projects that maybe, you know, have been out too long. So, um, you know, Capital Dance and Cinema Festival um, in September, September 9th. It, for any listeners in the D.C. area, it's basically Cascadia, the American version. Um, yeah, so that's like that's the most immediate stuff happening. OK. OK. How can our listeners register, get their passes and tickets to Cascadia 2018? Great. All the info is at www.cascadia.com. DC 
festival.com dc like dance cinema festival.com so there you know everything's there it's a one-stop shop um we don't do tickets on eventbrite we use square um so you just have to go into the site and click online box office and then you'll be able to find ticket links there and we do have separate events on june 2nd for children and for teenagers so if you you know any young dancers um we're offering tap and jazz classes with myself and mark orsborne um and we're also offering a dance cinema movie night um for kids and teens as well so if the website's pr- i think pretty clearly divided to june 2nd for kids and teens and june 3rd for adults so today we were talking about the adult events but when you if and when you do go on the website you'll see that there are offerings for on saturday as well and location uh, on Sunday, events are at Van City Theater, 1181 Seymour Street. Okay. In the Vancouver International Film Center. Okay, and you are offering a code for uh, my listeners, for Vancouver Entrepreneur listeners, and the promo code is Van Entrepreneur uh, for a 15% discount, and that's valid until June 1st. So um, I recommend you take advantage of that. That's a great offer for a 15% discount, and I'm sure uh, you'll have a great experience, and um, I think it's something that uh, everyone can learn from. So thanks, Robert. And I mean, we have individual tickets, so you can just come to the screenings if, you know, if, if that's all you're interested in, or you can get a pass and you can come to the forum and you get a t-shirt, you get popcorn it is all bundled in there. So, okay. <laughs> and you'll be there obviously both days so they can, uh, of come, course. So they can come say hello to you. And, uh, if they want to have a conversation with you or connect with you, you know, any of the entrepreneurs that are on the show would like to speak with you. I'm sure you'd be happy to speak with them. And, uh, I would love to, I would love to. Great. Okay. Okay, Jen. Well, thank you for coming on the show today. I've learned a lot about you and the festival and, um, uh, I'm sure our listeners have as well. Thanks so much, Robert. Great. Okay. And, and good luck with the podcast. Thank you for doing this. You know, it's, it's really important for people to have resources like this because sometimes, you know, we have, we have content that we listen to, to, to turn off. But I mean, when you, when you, facilitate a podcast like this that's truly like a resource and it's educational and it's inspiring i think that's a really important place um you know to to occupy in in the in the web space and in people's minds so thank you for doing that well thank you very much yes vancouver is a very community oriented entrepreneurs stick together they help each other and i'm finding as i do this everyone's uh dialing into this so they can reach out to each other and uh everyone wins right so that's, yeah that's totally it. Great. Okay. Well, thank you again, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye-bye.